Hi again, everybody. In this video tutorial, we are going to briefly go through the steps for exporting a project, something you finished in Premiere, you've got it all done in the sequence, the timeline, and you're ready to shoot it out to turn this video in. And, and this will govern any of your broadcast stories, anything you have to turn in in a broadcast format. So let's get to it. I have a sequence all queued up right here. And what I'm going to do is just go to a quick export. There are a couple of things actually I do right before I export. And this can help sort of speed up that exporting process. The first thing I want to do is actually check the sequence to make sure it is edited. Do a little quality control check, editorial check. Is everything said correctly? Is it pronounced correctly? Is it technically clean? The audio edits, the levels, the cuts between shots, you know, all that kind of uh, review, proofreading essentially is what you want to do. When I get that done, I do another thing really quickly. I look at the top of the sequence or the timeline. You see this area that's gray? Well, just under that, if I see a yellow or a red line, that tells me that I've got stuff that needs rendering. Uh, so what I may have are some little audio dissolves or effects that I've put in there. If I did a fill left effect, that would have to be rendered. If I have a title, any lower thirds or full screen graphics, those are all considered effects that Premiere has to fully render and sort of compile to put the video out. So I'll check that, and if I see red or yellow up here, I don't, on this sequence, it's all rendered. But if I see that, I'll just do a quick real render just to get it out of the way first. I can do that by going up to my sequence menu, and then I'll just say render the entire work area. You see that item right there on the list? Second, or third thing down, render entire work area. What that's going to do is Premiere will take the work area, which is all this under the gray strip. That gray bar across the top is my work area. And if you notice, it extends across the entire sequence. From there, the ending position, all the way to the beginning. So anything in here that's in effect on these tracks will get rendered. I also want to make sure I have the tracks activated. See when I click and it turns light gray? That's what I want. All my video and anything that has content on the audio tracks. Highlight those, make sure it's the work area is stretched out over the whole timeline, and then do render work area. And that will start cranking along and those effects will be fully rendered. And then when you go to export, that will speed the process up. If you see for some reason that your work area looks a little funky, like let's say this work area, oops, got dragged to there. Maybe inadvertently you moved it or put it here. When you go to render or export, it may only deal with this portion of the timeline. So you always want to know where this work area is. If you don't ever move it and just leave it alone, what it does is it grows along with your sequence. As you add new material to the timeline, the work area just by itself stretches out over that. So unless you mess it up accidentally, it shouldn't be a big problem. Okay, so we checked for rendering, we checked our work area. A couple of other things I do just for safety, because I don't want to get burned and export the wrong part of the sequence. I position the playhead back at the head of the sequence. I hit home, literally the home key, and it sends the playhead right there. Good. The other thing I do is I make sure I don't have any stray in or out marks left behind. See where I marked in and out, and it's highlighted in this gray? Uh, if I do an export right now, maybe for whatever reason it just exports between the in and the out, and all I get is like this 10 second chunk exported. Don't want to do that, so I clear the in and outs by doing option X. All clear, hit home, and we're back to the beginning. So now, all right, let's finally get to it. We're going to export. It's a pretty simple process now that we've got a preset export setting for you. I go this, I do the keyboard method, so I hit Command M for export media, and my little media export box pops up, export settings. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to first look to make sure that our whole work area, see it says down at the bottom there, work area. That's what it by default wants to export. We can change it, but again, I think by default, let's leave it as work area, and we already checked the sequence to make sure the work area covers the whole uh, amount of content. Got it. And it's a minute 27, and that's exactly how long our sequence is. That's good, and it also shows me that the playhead is right up at the beginning. So then I go way up here to the upper right into my export settings. And this is crucial. I want to make sure that under format, I have H.264. This is the video codec we're going to use to encode this video for export. 
uh, H.264 is selected, perfect. My preset is going to be the Grady News Source preset. Do you see that right at the top of the list? And it should be there by default. Any of the computers in 132 or up in the lab, uh, 48, room 418, have this preset loaded on those computers. If for some reason you don't see this preset, make sure you first select H.264 for format. It's right there. And then drop down the menu. If you don't see Grady News Source there, you might be over in the MLC or at some other computer that doesn't have these settings. If you don't see it, simply do this. Drop down to, scroll down to HD, and what you want is the 720p 2997. You can pick that. And that will still give you an H.264. That'll be your codec or your encoding format. And the resolution will be 720p 2997. That will work out just fine. What I do next is see where it says output name. And I mouse over that and it turns into a little hyperlink. So I click it. And what happens is Premiere brings up a little box and says, okay, what do you want to save this as? Where do you want to save it? And what do you want to call it? So for this purpose, let's just do this. I'm going to call it export, if I spell it correctly, export test, and then I'll do tally 5560. So that's what I want to call the actual video, the MP4 that's going to go out. Uh, and then what I do is I direct it onto my hard drive. I say, okay, I want to export a copy of this first for my own safety. I want to put it on my drive in my Premiere Edit projects, uh, the correct month, and the correct year, I'll go back here to my projects, and this was way back in 2013, so I'll go to that, 2013. This was all part of my uh, tutorial editing, so I'll open those back up. I think they were in the month of February, or was it January? So long ago when I started this. There it is, Premiere Tutorials, and this is going to be a video export, and as you remember in that folder system, we have a folder for video exports. Video exports, and let's say this is something I want to export as a broadcast package, I'll open up the broadcast folder, and then I'll simply say, okay, save it there. All right, so let's go ahead and hit it. We'll hit export, and it's going to be off and running. Shouldn't take very long. Okay, our export has finished. You notice when it finishes, the little export window disappears from the screen, so you know you're good. So let's go check it. Let's hide Premiere, go to the old hard drive, and remember, I put this export in my Premiere tutorials, so I put it back in an old folder that I had been uh, working on quite some time ago. It was in my 2013, there we are, and it was in my Premiere Tutorials. It was a video export, wasn't it? So it was right here, and it was the broadcast version, and there it is, Export Test Tele 5560, and it's a, a .mp4 file. So now I'm ready to turn it in for a grade for actual class. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to close this window and go to my handy finder, and it's going to connect me to that shared folder, public folder, so you get to the correct, correct class, then you look for the folder for that assignment. Export test, and then you would just copy it right over here into that folder in the computer on 132. And that's a simple way to do that. And stay tuned because I'll be updating these folders. The trick here that's very important, of course, let's put that back, I'll close that. And the thing that's very important to remember is when you connect to this computer, you're connecting to a shared folder on that iMac in the lab as soon as you are finished exporting. As soon as it got to the right folder and you copied it in there, please eject that folder and disconnect your computer from that shared folder. That will help enormously. We don't want to leave that sitting out open on a computer when you leave the lab. Somebody else comes in and sees that open folder. Make sure you eject when you're done. And that's how you can get your folder or your assignment turned in all the way.